Hello everyone, it's Mark Goodacre here. Welcome to episode 12 of the NT Pod, the podcast all about the New Testament and Christian origins. Today we're going to meet Junior and ask if she's the first woman apostle. When I was a student in Oxford in the mid-1980s, I have a strong memory of going along to one of Ed Sanders' lectures on the Apostle Paul. They were called uh, The Theology of Paul. And on one occasion, he only spent two or three minutes on this, but he told us about a woman apostle who was uh, mentioned by Paul in Romans chapter 16 and verse 7. He said to us this name, Junia, uh, is is an, is only ever in antiquity a woman's name. I remember being bowled over by this. It was one of those things that was just a kind of a passing remark, but it was a, a revelation to me because I had been for a long time, a, always been a very strong supporter of women's ordination. And back in those days, it was before women had begun being ordained in the Church of England. And as a supporter of that uh, that cause. I was amazed by the thought that there was actually something so clear in the New Testament where there was a woman in a position of great authority, like being an apostle. And I thought, why doesn't everybody know about this? Well, it turned out that lots of people didn't know about it. And you can go back to books even written as recently as the 1990s, and people are still referring to the character in Romans chapter 16, verse 7, as a man. Now, what on earth is going on here? And why is it that people don't know, lots of people, about this character, Junior? Okay, well, let's take a closer look at the all-important text, Romans chapter 16, verse 7. Here, in context, what Paul is doing is he's going through a whole bunch of people that he knows in the church in Rome, and he's greeting them uh, one by one. And in verse 7, he says, Greet Andronicus and Junia, my relatives who were in prison with me. They are prominent among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. Now, I'm quoting there from the New Revised Standard Version, but if you took an older translation, like the Revised Standard Version, it sounds a bit different. This is how it sounds in the RSV. Greet Andronicus and Junius, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners. They are men of note among the apostles, and they were in Christ before me. Now, it looks like what happened in some of these older translations, people saw the word apostle... And they thought, oh, well, it must be a man. And a kind of presupposition that an apostle could only be a man crept into the translation. Because that language about man and men isn't there in the text. So what you have to do is you have to say, well, what are the indications about the gender of junior? And this is where you have to do a little bit of work with the Greek if you don't have any Greek, and that's probably the majority of uh, my listeners, uh, don't worry, because I'll try and explain it as simply as I can. The text, when it appears in Greek, says unian, uh, with at the end of the the word there is a Greek letter nu, uh, like our n. And this is because it's in the accusative case. And to try and work out what the name was in the nominative case, what the name actually was, we have to say it's either of two possible things. It's either a male name, Junias, which is the one which the RSV went for in the uh, translations we just looked at, or it's Juniar, a female name, which the NRSV goes for. So how do we pick between those two? Because each are possible on a reading of the Greek. Well, it has to be Juniar. And the reason for this is that when you start looking at ancient examples of the word Junias, the male, it's actually Junianus, a, a sort of a, a contraction of that, it just doesn't exist. You just cannot find good examples of it. By contrast, there are lots and lots of examples of the name Juniar. So it does look that the really likely thing is that you have a married couple, Andronicus is one of the couple, and Juniar is the other one of the couple. So doesn't that settle it? Doesn't that mean that we've done it in one? I mean, here we have Juniar, a female name, and there she is appearing in a verse that talks about her being prominent among the apostles. Well, this is the way that it's been taken for most of Christian history. It's only relatively recently that Bible translations and Greek New Testaments and so on have been taking uh, this character as a male, Junius. So uh, if you go back to the early fathers, if you go back to people like John Chrysostom in what, the second half of the fourth century, he clearly regards this as Junia, a female apostle. Well, the story doesn't quite end there. There's still another twist in the tale. Because recently, Michael 
Bura and Dan Wallace have written an article in which they accept that Junior is indeed a woman, and that's now pretty much undisputed anywhere. But instead they look at the second half of the verse in question and they want to retranslate what's going on there. In the NRS RSV we looked at before, we saw the translation, they are prominent among the apostles, making it without any doubt that Andronicus and Junior are apostles. But what Wallace and Bura show is that it's possible to translate this as they are esteemed by the apostles. In other words, it's not actually Andronicus and Junior that are apostles. The apostles are doing some esteeming. They think that Andronicus and Junior are great, as it were. So where do we take things from here? Well, there have been several responses to the Wallace and Bura article. And while they all show that it's a possible reading of the text, they show that it's actually a reasonably unlikely one because the preponderance of evidence suggests that the traditional translation, the one that was uh, assumed by the ancients like Chrysostom, is much, much more likely uh, to be the case. One of these scholars is called Eldon J. Epp, and he's written an entire book on the thing and called it Junior the first woman apostle. And a point I'd want to add here, which is one which isn't made in the scholarship anywhere, is that it would be rather an odd thing for Paul to say, to, to say that th this couple, Andronicus and Junior, were esteemed by the apostles. When Paul talks about the apostles, he includes himself in that group. So he would have said something like, if, if that was his meaning, he would have said, by all the apostles, or by all the apostles, including me. When he's saying here, the apostles, he's using it as a descriptor for Andronicus and Junior. He's not using it as an external group that's giving some kind of affirmation. I don't think it's a usage that Paul would have found at all congenial. So we've got our female apostle in Romans 16, 7, Junior. On the balance of evidence, it really does look like this is the best way of taking the verse. Some of you will have noticed, though, that the title of today's NT pod had a question mark at the end of it. Junior, the first woman apostle, question mark. So what's that question mark doing there? Well, part of it is because I want you to listen and find out what my view is on the topic. But... The question mark's also there because I think Eldon J. Epp is wrong about her being the first woman apostle. There's someone else in the New Testament who is the first woman apostle, and it's not Junior. And I'll tell you about her next time. Well, thanks very much for your company on the latest NT Pod. The home of the NT Pod is podacre, P O D A C R E dot blogspot dot com, or you can just look for NT Pod via Google. You can find it on iTunes, uh, it's on Duke University's iTunes U. And I look forward to your company next time when we'll be looking at the first woman apostle, this time without the question mark. See you soon. <laughs>